despair is such a dark, dreary thing. It binds us and blinds us to all but our suffering. And that remains ever true, especially after prior events we now follow through. The Dean has now asked for the remaining pack bearers be purged, and with today's video, all the paths will diverge. Angst is a plenty as we dive to Act 2, and these warnings more than ever is needed, it's true. For there are in this act themes that can be affecting, the dialogues more so, a bit heart-wrenching. So keep that in mind as we see how Nozomi copes. In the game's second act, Nozomi Hinata, Shield of Hope. What's up girls and boys? What's up internet? I am Bianca and welcome to our first video on the second act or acts in Nippon Ichi Software and Furuyu's Monarch. As I've mentioned in our warning and in the previous video, we have come to the point where the game is allowing us to choose on a path and on a sub-ending, you could say, that we would want. Now, although the contents of the events that trigger within these roots are different and lean more towards which character you choose, the puzzles, the gimmicks, enemies and their levels, items you could obtain from them as well as the general walkthrough for most of them largely remains the same. And although you can choose which character's route you want to go with first, I've decided to play them as they appear in the achievements list which is Nozomi, Shinya, Ryotaro, and finally Kokoro. Now, for the first part of their acts, Nozomi and Ryotaro have similar progression as does Shinya and Kokoro. For the second part, Nozomi and Shinya have similar route progression as does Ryotaro and Kokoro. You also don't need to worry about creating separate save files to view all the sub-endings since you will need and the game does require you to complete all routes and all of these routes provide truth bombs that you may or may not have seen coming. Now, with that info dump out of the way, let's get started with our walkthrough. In order to start Nozomi's second act, you will need to speak with her at the student council room that is right across the steward's room. So, head there and interact with the door to trigger a cutscene. Pick whatever you want in the first dialogue branch and Nozomi will let you in. From there, continue watching the event unfold, after which you will be taken out of the student council room and have a short event with Vanitas. Interact with the student council room a second time to enter and don't forget to pick up the secret scoop your honest votes note on the right desk before speaking speaking with Nozomi to trigger another event where you will eventually be given a set of choices that you will absolutely need to choose the correct answers in order for Nozomi to join you. Don't worry if you mess it up though, you can keep trying and re-watching the event until you pick correctly. The choices that you should pick are, I can't do that, followed by I need your help, then so a tragedy like this never happens again, being a fake doesn't make you weak, is that truly how you feel, do you want to wallow in your despair, and finally, then what do you want, Nozomi? Picking these choices, as well as choosing to entwine your fate with hers, will lock you in on her route, regardless of the choices you pick afterwards. Once Nozomi has joined you as your companion, Shinya will arrive to inform you that the Dean would like to speak with you. So, head to the Dean's office once you are ready to trigger 
for yet another cutscene and to be pointed to the direction of where and what you need to do next. Once Sora and Shinya leaves and the cutscene draws to a close, leave the main building and make your way to the library on E Street. Be sure that Nozomi as well as your fiends are properly leveled up especially if you haven't been using her outside of her own act. Entering the library will trigger another cutscene where, at the end of it, you will finally be able to freely explore the library, even the areas Kokoro won't let you get near before. Don't forget to grab the Seven Wonders for note at the Southern Hall of the first floor before heading up to the misinfested second floor. Up at the second floor, wait for Vanitas to give you the phone number to the depths and make that call to be teleported to Precipice of Slot 1 battle area where, if this is your first foray into the library in the second act, you will face level 34 to 39 enemies and where the map is pretty straightforward with a breakable wall gimmick barring your path to the area where the singularity can be found. Deal with the enemies as you please while keeping your mad gauge as low as possible since we still will be exploring this misfilled area and heading off into another battle soon. When the singularity has been dealt with, you will be free to explore without the fear of the death calls popping up. Now while in the library, the unsettled will react to loud footprints, so be sure to walk by pressing the R1 button on your DualShock or DualSense controller controllers or the R button if you're playing on the Nintendo Switch to walk and keep them from alerting to your presence. If they do end up being alerted, they will go after you and increase your mad gauge to full thereby kicking you out of the library and sending you back to the infirmary. As you are exploring the area, keep an eye out for Kokoro's notes to get to know her mindscape a bit more and get hints on how to solve the riddles and find the location of the phone call. Also, be sure to pick up the following items and notes you can find here. locker found in the east block, the password can be found, as Kokoro's note suggests, on Chromel's on human note, which we will find later. But for those of you who want to unlock the locker now, the password to do so is 1978. That's 1978, the year when the book was written. You will get the note Memo Fertile Ground 5 for your troubles. Now, in order to trigger the phone call, head between the 19th and 20th. 20th bookshelf as Kokoro hints, which can be found at the southern block of the library. Be sure to use your mental stabilizers before answering the phone call, especially if your mad gauge has increased significantly during your exploration. In the battle for Kokoro's first ideal, provided this is your first time doing so, you will be facing against enemies level 34 to 39 and a map that has breakable wall gimmicks in. It. The pathway, like the precipice battle leading up to the large area in the battle map, is a little narrow, so keep that in mind when positioning your units. Apart from that, there's nothing else to be said about this battle that should be easy enough to win. Once the battle is done, you'll be sent back to the student council room, which has effectively now become your headquarters during Nozomi's act. Speak with Nozomi to trigger a short event where she tells you more about what happened with herself and her best friend. Afterwards, make your preparations, you know, head to the infirmary, level up and gear up before heading back to the library to tackle the third floor. Once in the third floor, wait for Vanitas to hand over the number to the precipice of Sloth 2 and deal with that first. In this battle, there will be two gimmicks waiting for you. Spike Spear, which causes bleed, and the Paralyzed Flower. The enemies here range from level 33 to 39 if this is your first foray into this area with Nozomi. When the singularity has been dealt with and you are free to roam about without the death calls triggering, 
be sure to check the various red notes for hints on where the phone call can be found as well as clues to the password for the lockers in the library. Don't forget to tread lightly as you obtain the following items while you're at it. There is also another locker at the east block of this floor with the hint on how to open it right on the chair right next to it. Simply put, the password to this locker is 1973. 1973 and it will net you the memo Hunting Grounds SR when you unlock it. Be sure to get this before clearing the fog in this area since the east block will be locked afterwards. To find a phone call, look for the 50th bookshelf in the north block of the library and follow the path that curves to the east close to it. The phone call can be triggered at the end of that path. Be sure to check your mad gauge and lower it before answering the call however and be whisked away to the second ideal battle. In this fight, you will be facing off against enemies ranging from level 34 to 39 if you are doing this for the first time with Nozomi as well well as the paralysis flower gimmick. This map is longer than the previous one as well with how the enemies are scattered and how winding the paths are. Apart from that, the enemies should not pose any troubles or threats to you and you should be able to wipe the floor with them no problem. After the battle, you will once again be sent back to the student council room. As usual, speak with Nozomi, restock and replenish your healing items and mental stabilizers, and level up as needed before heading back to the library one last time and finishing the task at hand. Before heading to the final ideal found on the first floor, however, head to the two rooms close to the entrance. Reading room 2 will have Keisuke Nakaizumi and his profile as well as a locker which you can open with the password 3341 to obtain a revival agent. While reading room 1 has Hina Maisaka and her profile plus another locker that can be opened with the password 10. 081 and will net you a status stabilizer. The locker in the main hall will open with the password 8181 and will give you the central reading room key item which you will need to open the door to the area where the final ideal can be found. So use it to unlock that door. Wait for the phone number to the singularity from Benitas and dive straight to battle with it. In the precipice of slot 3, you will encounter level 34 to 39 enemies with Nozomi and a battle map that has a bunch of gimmicks to it ranging from the healing light to spike balls, breakable walls, and a poison flower. You can opt to take the shorter route to the Singularity using the southeastern hallway and passing through the first spike ball or you can take the long but safer route around dealing with the enemies before breaking the Singularity. Either way, once the battle is done, explore this room and obtain the following while making sure to walk lest you alert the unsettled. To find the phone call, head to the bookshelf close to reading room 3 and the space between it. Answer the call and be whisked away into the other world where you will finally come face to face with Kokoro and her monarch. The battle music that plays here is a little bit melancholic which Personally, as someone who likes Kokoro, made this battle much harder to stomach. But anyways, for the ideal of Slot 3 battle with Nozomi, you will face fiends that are level 38 to 40. Kokoro will be at level 43 while her monarch will be a level higher. 
There are two spike balls present in the map, two breakable walls, a healing light, and a poison flower gimmick. And to make this battle a little bit more tedious, Kokoro and her monarch are located at the very end of this linear area and you will have to pass through all of those gimmicks to get to them. Like always, the pack bearer and the monarch will be stationary and waiting during their turns and will only move on the offensive once you get too close. As for their attacks and skills, the Monarch will be able to use Strict Defensive, which increases their preemptive skill. They have the Mist attack as well, which is a strong AoE attack. Kokoro, on the other hand, can immediately enter the Awakened state when she uses True Resolve. She can also use Strict Defensive like her Monarch. She also has Tactical Evasion, which increases her assist counter and assist evade. Attack wise, she can use Good Night Sleep Tight, which is a pretty decent damage dealer, and the Cannonade Catcher. Be careful of your unit's positioning since the paths are narrow and you may end up not being able to progress them forward if you bunch them up together and you'll just end up wasting your turn. Make use of the defer option if you want to give another unit a turn if this happens and just don't let them clog the path. Basically, for my own playthrough, I relied on party resonance to get through this battle as many of my units, the MC included, ended up breaking high mad gauge as Nozomi got her awakened gauge full which made for an optimal resonance to get them into the enlightened state and just dish out attacks while in this state. The Lunatic Axe, for instance, deal quite a lot of damage in this state. It could end up as a long battle depending on how strong and leveled up your units are, but it shouldn't be a troublesome one. Once the battle is done, the mist in the library will fully dissipate along with the remnants of Kokoro's ideal and her pact, and you will be brought back to the main building and to the infirmary where the chapter will come to a close. Now, as I've said, Nozomi and Ryotaro's first parts are similar, so you can use this guide as well to get through Act 2 Ryotaro Date Tower of Gluttony's initial section. The only major difference is the enemy levels and types that you encounter, not to mention the story told in those routes. Barring the story differences and which location ends up as your headquarters for the duration of a particular route, you can find what these enemy encounters are on the video description down below. Also, if you get the lockers opened in one route and got all the items in that particular route, then those items will not respawn on the next route that you will tackle that has the same requirements and the same walkthrough as this one. So for instance, if you already got the items here on Nozomi's route, you won't have to or you won't need to, you won't be able to find them essentially in Ryotaro's route. If you guys want to get started with Ryotaro's second act, meet him at the archives. After Vanitas warns you about picking your companions, speak with Ryotaro again and pick the following options. I'm staying, I wanted to size you up, what is it you're planning to do? Because of what was stolen from me, I can't judge you until I gauge your worth. And finally, I have a right to judge you. Similar to how it was with Nozomi, the game will ask you one final time if you want to entwine your fate with Ryotaro. Simply pick yes to lock his route in. Then just follow along this guide for the initial part of his second act in completing the library and check out our guide on Kokoro's second act to complete the latter part of his act. But anyways, this is all the time we have for today. We'll tackle the second part of Nozomi's act, which is also the second part of Shinya's act next time. Until then, Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, you guys know the drill. Dream on, fly on. Bye bye for now. Keep safe, everyone.